and welcome back to my channel if you haven't been here before. Hello, my name is Lena and I really like books. Not only do I like books, I'm one of those wankers who likes colour coding their books. Not only am I one of those wankers that likes colour coding their books, but I'm one of those wankers who likes to show you their colour coded books. This is a series where I show you my whole book collection in a more random stumble upon kind of way um, by showing you um, them colour by colour, shelf by shelf and then picking out a few books from each category, explaining why I've kept them, why I love them and they might be books that I might not have had an excuse or a reason to talk about on the channel before or at least not for a long time. First I'm going to show you that overview and then we're going to get into the books. The last video was yellow, this week it's pink and purple, let's go. <laughs> Hello, welcome, take a seat, grab a beanbag, grab a biscuit, welcome to my purple and pink shelves. Yes, they are three books deep, don't judge me. Poor unfortunate souls. They're in no particular order. So the first one is how to overcome your childhood. It's actually- ah! Shh, don't tell Craig. It is a really cool design actually. It's a school of life book that actually belongs to Craig. So I have never read it. Next, we've got two graphic guides. I've got a lot of these on my rainbow shelves in various places. They are graphic guides to big ideas. So they're comic books explaining theories and academic stuff. I use them a lot during my degree. They're great. Some of them are clearer than others because they all have different authors. So take a look in your local bookshop uh, for the best ones. But these two are pretty solid, I would recommend. This one is missing some stuff but I like it. It's still a good basis. This is The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner. One of my favourite interviews I ever did for the Vintage Podcast, which I present and produce, uh, is my interview with Rachel Kushner. This is a book about the lives of women in prison and she did, I would want to say she did some amazing research but that diminishes it. She has some beautiful friends uh, who live behind bars and she um, wanted to write a fictional novel about the experience of women. So if you want a more realistic literary view of Orange is the New Black, then would recommend. This is the Faber Poetry Diary. Faber are very famous for releasing one of these every year and my friend Sana gave this to me I believe. It's got poems for every week and her <laughs> guilty in having not used it so maybe I should leave that out so I use it more. I want to try some write some poetry in it. This is Recipes for Sad Woman by Hector Abad. If you've watched my channel for a long time you will recognise this book but this is one of my big breakup books that really got me out of one of the deepest breakup holes I've ever fallen into. I'm going to talk about this one. Let's take this one. I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Enid Blyton's Mr. Galliano's Circus. Um, I love books about the circus and um, dissecting what it means and I think it might have come from reading this book to be honest. I don't know how long I've had this but I just keep it with me wherever I move because it's beautiful and I actually haven't reread it in years and years but it was definitely my favourite Enid Blyton growing up. Memories! This is one of my aspirational moments my life is falling apart by but I keep it because I stand by it. Writing and selling romantic comedy screenplays. I could do that. That could be a thing I could do. When I do, I'll read this book and then I'll write the romantic comedy screenplay and then I'll buy a nice little cottage in Wales. Yes, great. No denial here. Howl's Moving Castle, this... <sighs> fucking said it wrong. Howl's Moving Castle, been spending too much time in a fucking flat with a southerner. Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. Uh, this is Craig's book. He likes it. That's all I have to say about that. And also it really caused me some big pain about where this goes. Like, should it be on the green shelf? Should it be on the purple shelf? I decided to get the green shelf near the purple shelf so we could have some kind of synergy. Uh, this is a book I've talked about many times in videos before. <laughs> have never finished but have definitely highlighted lots of passages in Fat is a Feminist Issue by Susie Orbach. Also a massive power note move, sitting on a tube holding a book that just says fat. Roman Krasnerik's How to Find Fulfilling Work. I love this man, I love this book, I've read it twice changed my life. There are more beautiful things than Beyonce by Morgan Parker. This was in my top 10 books last year I think, was the year before, but look at that finish. Steady. I'm getting a book production hard on. <laughs> I talked about this one in one of my recent videos about new books. This is The Tree of Heaven by Mary Sinclair. The British Library are republishing lots of out of print books by women and this is one of them. This is not a drill. I know, gee, I'm not even gonna start talking about this. There's a whole video just on this book. Enjoy, it's here. My Salinger Year by Joanna Rakoff, a publishing classic I have never read but have all the good intentions. The Twits by Roald Dahl. I found this copy. This is the exact edition that I used to have when I was a kid and I found it in a cherry shop and got very excited. This is the ideal length of a book, I believe, and the ideal amount of pictures. It's just the perfect book. One day I'm gonna get them as a tattoo. 
Mark my words. The Wife by Meg Walitza, one of the only film covers I will permit on my shelves. Like most book lovers, they make my heart hurt, but it's Glenn Close, man. She, she gets a special treatment, it's fine. One of my favourite books ever, I think. Uh, I love London history, so this is Underground Overground, Wormerly, A Passenger's History of the Tube by Martin Andrew, Andrew Martin. I've dipped into this. This has been dipped into. It has been dipped. Blueberries. This is actually a new book that I should probably talk about in, a, I should put this up here so I remind myself. This is a new book of essays that I was quite interested in and I wanted to put in my new books. It's published by Scribe who are a great uh, indie publisher. I love a bold cover and what I've read about this was really cool so I should put this up here to remind me to talk about it in new books video. Love After Love, another one I should probably talk about in my new books video. Let's keep this up here but I got this at a Faber New Works night and I heard the author read from it and I thought it was really beautiful and what a cover. Animals by Emma Jane Unsworth, that was in my top 2019 books. What a gem. Kate Morton is one of my fave women's fiction, women's fiction, women's fiction authors and she's a gem. I've done some videos and podcasts with her. I think she is amazing. These editions are quite rare. They're done in collaboration with a designer called Sophie Allport and they reissued all the Kate Mortons with these beautiful kitsch little designs. So I always keep that one around because I think it's beautiful and it's got these cardboard ridges on it as well. Orgasmic. The Virgin Suicide. Oh my god, no, just for production value only we have to talk about this book. Okay, that's going that's going it's going on the pile. We'll talk about that in a sec. Oh my god, another winner. <laughs> Stop. We've got to talk about this too. That's two in a row. I'm sorry guys, but we've got we've got to. This is a new edition of Iris Murdoch. I made a podcast all about Iris Murdoch. I don't haven't actually completely read a whole Iris Murdoch book yet, uh, but we are reissuing them at work. This is a new vintage classic. Look at it. They're all so beautiful. This is the See the Sea one, by the way. Oh my fucking god. Look at that. Get in my belly. They're the new Iris Murdoch editions, if it so interests you. This is an American edition of Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. I listened to this in audiobook and I was looking for a lovely, like, keepable copy of this because I just think it's one of the best books I've ever read. And I found this in America and was like, it mine, take it poem. It's just stunning and it's got this, like, coated picture of her on the front that's just perfect. Perfect. Shame about the floppy pages, but what can you do? These are two vintage classics I've had for a very long time. A Vindication on the Rights of Woman by Mary Wollstonecraft. Uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, fun fact, was the mother of Mary Shelley who wrote Frankenstein and she was also, she's also kind of called, called the godmother of feminism. This is an amazing book and actually quite understandable considering when it was written. <laughs> I remember buying this from a charity shop when I was a camping trip with friends and like sitting in the corner while they were sitting at the campfire like highlighting it like a nerd. It's before they had the word for feminism so they just explained it and it was great. Why Look at Animals, another really interesting book that I read for university and kept. It's called by John Berger who wrote Ways of Seeing, seminal text. I should reread this. This is a great, I'm going to reread that. How to Choose a Partner, School of Life. I used to work for Pam Millen, so I collected quite a few of these. I think I did read this but a long time ago. It's pretty good, you know, keep it in the back burner just in case, you know, you never know. Sorry Craig, that wasn't. <sighs> Big Magic, Crate of Living Beyond Fair by Elizabeth Gilbert, what a classic. Some people find this wishy-washy and to those people I say, lion up. One of the best books I've ever read about getting your arse in gear, about creating, not expecting your creative living to pay your rent and how to have the courage to create when you think it might be shit. This is a physical copy of Angels in America by Tony Kushner. I'm one of those dickheads who actually got to see Andrew Garfield in it at the National Theatre, uh, three rows from the front and it was incredible and I immediately like wanted to buy this afterwards and read the script myself because I'm a nerd. Uh, it's quite, it's quite big. <laughs> So I haven't got around to it yet, but um, I should do soon because I love reading plays and look at that cover. Oh my god, my wrist hurts so much. <laughs> oh my god, a program for Sylvia. Please bring this musical back. It is a musical critiquing some of the suffragettes who were Tories and what we really know about suffragettes. Slay in your lane. Oh my god, Yomi and Elizabeth. 
my true loves. Yomi and Elizabeth are so, two of the most wonderful women I've ever met. Uh, this is their book, Slaying Your Lane, Black Girl Bible. Um, it's all about making it in the workplace, how it feels to be a black woman in Britain. They came on my podcast a while ago, so I will link that below. But they're just like premium human beings and what a design for a book as well. I love the pink. Coffee break, don't mind if I do. This is Learn English, Tell China's Stories. It's tr about traditional festivals in China and I got given it on a recent trip to China and I kind of just want to dip into it um, out of curiosity and to learn a bit more about what they teach children about Chinese culture because I think it's quite interesting. This is not my favorite, favorite Jane Austen book but my favorite Jane Austen edition. Look at this, it's all like imprinted, debossed, with colour and then quotes from the book on the front. Inside looks like this. What a piece of work. You can see that I kind of keep stuff for production value as well. Quite small typesetting. Um, but apart from that, I think a perfect book. These are like, they're called like cloud classics and they're made in Australia. Not your best work, Austin, but you know, Pride and Prejudice has its place. Be More Pirate, this was one of my top books of 2018. I love it. I also love the design of this physical edition. It's all about how to subvert capitalism with um, the principles of golden age piracy and why the golden age pirates were the most liberal, progressive, kind of socialist movement that was happening before we even knew things like that were happening. The end. Hello. This is a book I've never read, but keep because the design of the front cover is so good. The, literally, that is the whole thing, and it should be on the red shelf, but it annoyingly has a purple spine. But I love the fact that the whole of this ridiculously long title is squeezed onto the spine. The horrific sufferings of the mind-reading monster Hercules, barefoot, his wonderful love, and his terrible hatred. A novel. Bold. Um, oh my god, okay, Laurie Penny, Unspeakable Things. This has to be spoken. We're gonna speak about this. This is going on the pile. What We Buried, poems by Caitlin Scheel. I read this a long time ago, so I'm not gonna give it a review on the spot. But like, it was pretty good. I've obviously kept it, so I obviously liked it. I've always kept this book around because I haven't read it because of the design. Look at that, look at the foil. Leslie Jensen, Cat and Fiddle. Oh my god. If I ever get a book published, I'm gonna bring this to a meeting and be like, can we make this happen? Can we make this happen? Hotel Silence. This is a book in translation from Iceland that I've talked about in one of my translated fiction videos. I will link it below. But what a fucking wonderful novel. A wonder wonderful. It's about suicide and the impulse to disappear and what we can discover from uh, disparate communities. Uh, it's... Phew, what would Boudicca do? Um, I dip into this one a lot. I know um, Liz and Beth who wrote this together. Um, they are wonderful women and this is everyday problems solved by history's most remarkable women. So it goes through like all of these famous women in history and tells you like what they would do in certain kind of like agony aunt situations. <laughs> um, and it's really funny and really well researched and I would recommend it. This is my diary from when I was like 14 and I was planning to make a video reading it out because I used to do that and I just I don't know what I'm gonna find in there so I just kind of leave it here but th this is my diary I was going through a pink phase Amelia Ann is dev dead and gone another book that I've never read but keep because the cover is so beautiful I should read like it's lockdown I should read you underground tales for London stories inspired by the tube again I need to read this but I love the cover and I really like stories about the underground so why am I not reading that right now I don't know obviously finally um, this is a beautiful hardback edition of uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, um, illustrated by Jim Kay. Craig got this for me, it's my favourite of all the Harry Potters. Don't at me, it's my favourite of all the Harry Potters. Don't! So it turns out 2020, not the year to pre-film things. <laughs> Obviously, I just want to clarify that I'm not like, don't at me about JK Rowling, because obviously trans women are women and why, what is happening on Twitter? Perhaps obviously, but potentially not. I'm saying don't at me because I think that the third Harry Potter is the best out of all seven, not... <sighs> I kind of keep it for a rainy day when I'm gonna need to have some beauty in my life because I actually haven't gone the whole way through it, although I have flicked through most of the pictures. Okay, let's talk about the books that I picked out. So the first book I picked out was The Virgin Suicides. I don't know why I'm ASMRing it. Ah, yeah. Miniature hardbacks are so hard to come by and I had to really hack this down. I think, and the existence of this 
makes me think very hard about the practicality of production value and books because surely the whole point of a hardback is so that it lasts longer and it's more durable right but most hardbacks are massive so you wouldn't take them out of the house anyway the small books are paperbacks the books that aren't made to be durable it doesn't make any sense so finding beautiful tiny hardbacks is a small specific very sad little joy in my life but a joy all the same. These are the Picador Modern Classics. They're very hard to get hold of now. They were only for sale in the US, so I bought this off the book depository, I think. And they were a little collection of beautifully designed editions of modern classics. So this is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. It's one of my favourite books ever. I used to do a podcast with two of my best friends, um, Hannah and Lucy, called The Banging Book Club, and I made us discuss it on there as well. So I've read it maybe about five times. I just love that this is authentically an actual pocket-sized book. How often do you get an actual pocket-sized book? And this one also has this kind of rose gold sheen to it. I don't know if you can see that, but I can. This is such a weird premise for a book, and Jeffrey Eugenides is such a weird author. I'll be honest, I've read another two of his other books, and I didn't like them at all, but the specific way this one is written is incredible. It follows a family of four girls of varying ages and characteristics, and kind of, now I'm saying it, kind of mirrors little women like that. It's like a dark, sad little woman. <laughs> All of whom, and this is no spoiler because it's told to you on the first page, commit suicide. This book is not for the faint-hearted, it's told in retrospect, so the momentum and the plot and the suspense doesn't come from knowing what happens at the end, but how it happens and your human belief that by the end of the book you'll understand why it happens and how he plays with bathos with that. It's just so heartbreaking and beautiful. And there's an extra kind of like dark twist to it in that it's not told from the girl's perspective, it's told from these boys over the road who watch their movements. They are disembodied characters that have no names or faces, you don't learn anything about them. It's told from like a weird collective first person. So it's always like, we were riding our bikes and we saw them pass, we were looking through the window and we saw them. They were to us like this, they were to us like that. The boys barely have any actual contact with the girls throughout the book and that's what's so chilling. If you like perfume or you like Lolita, it's told in that kind of tradition and for me it was a really like interesting critique of our view of other people's sadness, what we want to see in other people's sadness, what is there, what isn't really there, and the kind of voyeuristic nature of death and sexuality and like you can write whole essays about this book but it's like I don't know how he does it and I'd love to just sit down and pick out every paragraph and be like how did you do that Jeffrey? I can't wait till this is in the public domain because I'd love to upload like a video of me reading it aloud but it'd be like a, such a cool one to read aloud and then discuss. And yeah I never really get an excuse to shout about how good this book is but like to me this is one of one of the books. It's actually on my list of top 20 books of all time that is a downloadable list that you can get for free if you sign up to my newsletter it's in the description but yeah this is always made by top 20 and I, I think if I only had 10 if I only had 10 physical copies of books to keep in the world this would be one of them because it's so physically nice as well as so like internally delicious the next one is this book Audrey Lord your silence will not protect you I damaged it I read some of the essays in it before um online and then I saw this beautiful new edition that Silver Press um, had brought out that this collection of Audrey Lord's essay <laughs> is that a sneeze I was really struggling to find like a UK edition of Audrey Lord's work that was good. And then Silver Press, who are a beautiful independent publisher that you should totally support, brought out this edition, which is gorgeous. And I immediately fucked up and accidentally spilt something on over here. But it's called Your Silence Will Not Protect You. I've only read a few of these essays and really what I need to do is sit down and read them all. But they're quite academic. And I think that the contents are also stuff that I should really properly absorb. So I've been making my way through them really slowly and I imagine I'll finish it in like 2025. But that's, but there's no problem with reading books like that. That's what I'm quite passionate about. I'm just like, there's no problem here. That's a valid way to absorb stuff sometimes and it might not contribute to the Goodreads goal but it contributes to the being a decent human goal so I'll take it. Some of the good essays I've read in it so far, Sexism and American Disease in Blackface, <sighs> fair play. Scratching the Surface, Some Notes on Barriers to Women and Loving. The essay that is I think my favourite essay of all time and the reason that I bought this book is um, Poetry is Not a Luxury which is a beautiful four page essay all about how nobody owns poetry, nobody owns words and poetry is not something that should be at the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It shouldn't be something that you get to be or get to have or get to write when you're at the top of that. It should be like right at the bottom. It's not a luxury. It's not something 
even that you should really pay for. She's quite like a socialist. <laughs> and for women, and especially for black women, it is a vital necessity of our existence. It forms the quality of the light within which we predicate our hopes and dreams towards survival and change. So for her, like, poetry isn't the result of change, but one of the catalysts. And it is just... I like how like bold and sparse and like clean this design is and it's also a paperback with flaps and we all know how Lena likes a good flap. This edition also has a preface by Rennie Edo Lodge so sold. Next is Recipes for Sad Women by Hector Abad. This is translated from Spanish? Yeah Spanish. I would only really specifically recommend this to like a certain type of person who likes a certain type of writing. But if you've ever felt like prey to the prophet, big magic, stuff like that, that like I get is offbeat for some people, but for me is like really, like a really nice space to just exist in and read. These are poetic musings and like allegories and retellings and meditations on sadness. That's it, that's the whole thing. I found this book in the depths of a bookshop. It's published by Pushkin Press, who are really famous for their translations. I found it when I was just going through like the most horrific breakup of my life. And it is one of the books that really put some salve on the wounds and let me curl around it and be sad. It has like some really silly old man phrases in it. <laughs> Where is it? All men are at least a few bubbles shy of a boil. There was some like dad stuff in it that is just like telling you not to show your cleavage, which I'm just like, okay, Hector. There were a few eyebrow raise moments, but in general it helped me so much. Uh, there's me meditations on like what beauty means and I think like this this phrase this little paragraph um, probably sums up the style quite well that tendency to portray to lie to be perfectly frank to hide away or to show yourself too much that care in guiding yourself so much that you end up telling your entire life story your own truth with all the minute details to a complete stranger those desires to flee to run away when someone shows you they're beginning to understand you that you haven't revealed anything that fear of staying that indomitable uh, that indomitable that indomitable desire for someone and not to be with anybody, to wrap caress up in words, those desires to change without giving anything up, that hunger for impossibilities, how to think of this contrary confusion, it's truth and it's lies, it's good and it's bad and there's no escape, nothing to do, have a drink of water. So it's like weirdly like comforting babble and if you are in like a really sad place right now and you don't need like a 10 steps to getting better you just need a you're not alone and this will make sense eventually then i would highly recommend this and also if you're trying to read more translated fiction like get on it um so my original copy of this book um laurie penny's unspeakable things um is on very long-term loan to a very good friend again um, but this copy is actually craig's by the time he got to it it was pink <laughs> i bought my copy when it first came out and it's the first thing i'd ever read of laurie penny's i actually think this cover is kind of weird like why is there a heart in the nib like why what does it mean why? This is a collection of like linked essays. I think that's how I describe it. All about the inner workings of feminism, why it's important that everybody learn about being able to articulate all the different reasons. She has this amazing idea of articulating incredibly complex reasons for why feminism makes sense and is should be like a priority for everybody. Also just making it feel really simple. It is part memoir and talks about her activism, her involvement in the Occupy movement and the sexism within that. It particularly looks into cyber sexism and the existence of women online, which I thought was really interesting and something that I hadn't really read so in depth about before. Craig was looking for some feminism to read and I recommended him this. It's actually a really good one to give men. I understand why the bright pink cover shouldn't put them off, but I also just think, why package it this way? But it has a lot about the fractures and masculinity and explains with a lot of generosity, I think, um, why men react the way they do, what things they could be going through. And it also talks, and what was really helpful for me was the expectation of emotional labor on women uh, to fix men, to be mothers to men. That was like a huge revelation for me. I think I read it like, I think I read it in like 2015 and it was just like a huge revelation for me. I was just really like, what? If a random man needs unlimited emotional support for hours and days and years, you don't have to give it to them. And it's also just like about rebuilding yourself in the way you'd like to be in a world that is better and then creating that world around you rather than accepting the way the world is and then like letting yourself shrink. Does that make sense? Needless to say, this is an incredible book that I probably need to reread because my memories of it are quite fuzzy, but like not just affectionate, kind of like, oh, there's one of the bricks that built me. I see you over there, breathe block of feminism. So yeah, not one I've talked about for years on this channel, but love. So they were my purple books. I hope you enjoyed them. You can watch the whole series of colourful books 
here. If you enjoyed being here and you'd like to be again, you can click the subscribe button down there. You can subscribe to my newsletter to get a free download of best 20 books to read before you die or the planet does. Yep, yeah, that's literally the name of it. And these videos are free to watch, but if you'd like to be one of the people that makes them possible, you can look into joining the Gumption Club. There are 200 embarrassing unlisted videos from me, live streams, secret podcasts with my boyfriend, a secret Facebook group to make friends with fellow Gumptioners, uh, and lots more. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know what you're reading below, or particularly if you've got a pink book that I should add to my shelves, let me know below. And until next time, Frog Snog out. I don't know when, but I know